From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only newscast that gives you all the super news in the city or the world. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. The cosmic being known as Pilgrim Elder made an appearance over Ring God Square Park on Thursday, demanding the return of something known as the Antigone Convex, which she claimed had been stolen from her by an unknown human. Pilgrim Elder has made appearances on our planet three times before. The first time, she came in search of the brightest minds in Alpha City, using them as part of a competition between herself and her celestial opponent, the Lagomorph. The Bright Man, the Conundrum Corporation, Dr. Escalapius, and Mindroid were among those taken to an extra-dimensional arena where they not only managed to defeat the best minds the Lagomorph could produce, but also managed to keep the Lagomorph from cheating and stealing the prize after it lost. The heroes were returned to Earth by a contrite pilgrim elder who swore her friendship to our planet. The second time, Pilgrim Elder came bearing a warning that the Apocalyptician had been summoned by the space sorcerers of the Cabal of Endings, allowing the time needed to prepare to stop the threat, an operation in which she played a major part. Lastly, she came to Earth wounded from an attack by the Exterions, hoping to again rally heroes to fight an army of invaders from outside reality. While a cadre of cosmically powered heroes, including the High Frontiersmen, Empyrean, Radiant, and an amazing number of alien heroes led by the Jamarganon took the fight to the army of outsiders. Pilgrim Elder's life was saved by the combined efforts of Dr. Escalapius and the Healer. This history of predominantly good relations made her angry appearance all the more surprising to experienced hero watchers. Adding to the confusion, was Pilgrim Elder's use of a power that we here at Alpha City News had heard of but never seen in action, her so-called Aura of Awe. Pilgrim Elder is known to be a religious figure in certain sectors of the galaxy, a fact borne out by the force of her presence displayed on Thursday. Every living thing coming within two blocks of Ringgod Square Park was forced, simply by the force of Pilgrim Elder's aura, to genuflect before the near goddess. It wasn't until the arrival of Lazy Eight that the situation began to clear. Lazy Eight, while not the first choice in anyone's mind to deal with a rogue cosmic being, proved to be the only person capable of approaching Pilgrim Elder without being brought to their knees. Even the most inveterate hero watcher might not be aware of Lazy Eight. Known in hero circles as an incredibly powerful layabout, Lazy Eight, a play on the glowing blue infinity symbol he sports on his forehead, rarely stirs himself out of his small apartment in Bakersley. He was, however, part of the collection of heroes who fought the Cabal of Endings, and was called from his day of playing video games to see why Pilgrim Elder appeared so enraged. While ACN's man on the scene couldn't get close enough to discern what the two spoke about, her observation through binoculars painted a picture of Lazy Eight cajoling the incensed Elder into explaining to him what it was that had brought her to our city with so much ire. Over the course of more than an hour, the two stood face to face, with the gradual lessening of the celestial heroine's field of effect showing that the powered slacker's words were doing some good. When the final vestiges of the aura faded, both Pilgrim Elder and Lazy Eight vanished, though to where is unknown. We will, of course, provide more information as it becomes available. The Alpha City Police Department has been receiving reports of a strange humanoid skunk creature appearing at various places around the city over the last week, usually in places where large crowds have gathered. Dubbed the Bunko Skunk, this creature, whose appearance generates interest, but none of the panic or fear one might expect when confronted by a talking skunk creature in a red vest and straw skimmer, quickly begins a line of patter leading to members of the crowd to begin playing what appears to be a type of three-card Monty. Though eyewitnesses uniformly state that everyone who plays the Bunko Skunk loses, sometimes in quite large amounts, 
none of the players exhibit anything but good-natured resignation about losing, and the police have yet to be called while the skunk is operating. It appears that the Bunko Skunk is being pursued by a dark-haired young woman, Asian or Native American, who has been identified by our experts as being Jenny Everywhere, aka The Shifter. Everywhere has been seen intermittently in Alpha City since the founding of the city almost three centuries ago, and those in the know claim that she exists in some form in every possible universe. Why Everywhere is pursuing the skunk is unknown at this time, but ACPD requests that anyone seeing either of them inform the authorities immediately. A talk being given by Professor Lars Protagonist at the Natural History Museum this week, detailing his adventures in the so-called Crystal Realms, was disrupted by the appearance of a man on horseback. The horseman, wearing full armor of a pearlescent white, matched by the coat of his steed, crashed through the doors of the space where the artifacts collected by Professor Protagonist were being displayed. Several of the attendees were injured by debris cast into the room when the doors were torn from their hinges and shattered. The pale horseman then attempted to trample Professor Protagonist under the hooves of his ghostly charger, but the professor managed to turn the tables using a meter-long staff topped with a blood-red crystal. Brandishing the staff at his attacker and reciting something in a throat-tearing language, Protagonist summoned a hole in the floor which swallowed the threat horse and all. Once the wounded had been tended to, intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston managed to get a word with the heroic professor. Protagonist told Lindy Johnston that the pale horseman had somehow come from the Crystal Realms. For those who haven't followed Professor Protagonist's adventures, the Crystal Realms is the name of a world connected to ours through a tunnel on the Swedish-Norwegian border near Tromsø. Professor Protagonist's research into Nordic myth had led him to the cave in early 2004, and he spent much of the next eight years traveling and charting the lands under the Smoky God, which is what the locals of the Crystal Realms call their son. The professor told Lindy that the Pale Horseman was once the foremost general, serving a terrible tyrant in one of the lands of the Crystal Realms, a tyrant which Protagonist had played no small part in deposing. The tyrant and his generals had been assumed destroyed, but the presence of the Pale Horseman would mean that the tyrant itself might be returning to the Crystal Realms through its use of dark magic. This would mean that all of the Crystal Realms are endangered, and possibly our world as well, now that the Pale Horseman has found a way to reach it. As such, Professor Lars Protagonist will be heading back to the Crystal Realms post-haste, and has promised Lindy Johnston an exclusive on what events transpire when he does so. We here at ACN wish the two-fisted professor luck and safety on his coming adventure. Fans of the High Frontiersmen will want to tune into Book Talk tonight at 8 p.m. Host Siobhan McRoy will spend an hour with the hero, discussing such things as his emergence as a young hero in the early 1960s, becoming one of the leading figures of the hero community over the ensuing decades, and his decision to write a book about his seven years of traveling off Earth during the 1980s, the best-selling Into the Deep Black. It's the Frontiersman's first extensive interview in more than a decade, so he and Siobhan are sure to have a fascinating conversation. Book Talk, hosted by Siobhan McCroy, tonight at 8 p.m., right here on ACM. This has been Alpha City News, produced by Carter Lee. The character of Jenny Everywhere is available for use by anyone with only one condition. This paragraph must be included in any publication involving Jenny Everywhere, that others might use this property as they wish. All rights reversed. You can find Alpha City News at Libsyn, on rhymeswithgeek.com, and on iTunes. If you have a minute, we sure would appreciate you giving us a review on any of them. You can also contact us directly at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you.